Hey guys, it's Miss Johnson and I'm here to bring you our notes video for Unit 9 Notes 2. Um, today our learning target is I can simplify monomial expressions and factor expressions. So today is going to be a throwback to Unit 3 and Unit 4. Throughout Unit 2, we're going to have to be able to simplify expressions involving exponents. So we're going to have to know those rules that we learned back in Unit 3 about combining exponent terms, and we're also going to be able to, we're also going to need to be able to factor expressions, which is undoing that multiplication, taking it apart. So we're throwing it back here, and this is a review day for us. So let's just think back to Unit 3 and talk about these rules that we learned. Product of a power. Product of a power is when we are multiplying exponent terms. When you are multiplying terms with exponents, you are adding their exponents. We could call this multiplying powers. So when you're multiplying powers, you add their exponents. So for example, if I had a to the sixth times a to the third, that's the same thing as a to the six plus three. I want to put those power together, which is a to the ninth. So I have a to the ninth power in that one. Product or Power of a power is when you have parentheses that are raised to another power on the outside, something that um, looks like this. And when we have that, we want to multiply our exponents. So if I have a power on the outside of parentheses, I'm raising some power in here to another power outside, I multiply my exponents, multiply my exponents together. So for this example, six to the sixth, all raised to the second power. This power of two that's on the outside goes to both parts inside that set of parentheses. So I really have six squared and then a to the sixth to the second. So six squared gives me 36 and then a to the sixth to the second is a to the twelfth. So that's where I get that multiplication of powers there. You can also think of this as, I know a lot of people did this in unit three, you can think of this as having six a to the sixth twice. A to the sixth. You have it times itself, and six times six is 36. A to the sixth, a to the sixth, you would add those powers just like we did up in the first example, and I get 12. The zero power, anytime I have something raised to the zero power, it's equal to one. So when I have 10,000 times a to the third, it's all being raised to the zero power, everything inside the parentheses. So this is equal to one. And then quotient of a power is when we are dividing powers. Okay, that word quotient tells us division. So when I'm dividing powers, I am going to subtract my exponents. So subtracting exponents, if I have a to the sixth over a to the second, that's um, the same thing as a to the, oops, yellow doesn't really work, there we go, a to the sixth minus two, which is a to the fourth. You can also think of this as having six a's on top, five, six, so I have six a's on the top of a fraction. I have two a's on the bottom of a fraction and that's because of those powers. And any number divided by itself is one. So a over a cancels out because a divided by a is one. Another a over a cancels out, a over a is one. I'm left with a times a times a times a, which is a to the fourth, okay? So let's just do a little practice here. In number one, I have four times x times x squared times y to the third. I am gonna combine like parts. So I'm gonna put my x to the first and my x to the second together. And when I multiply those powers, I add those exponents. So that's four x to the third times y to the third there. In number two, I have everything inside of set of parentheses all raised to the zero power. So four is raised to the zero power, x is raised to the zero power, y is raised to the zero power, z to the third is raised to the zero power. Everything inside is raised to the zero. This whole thing is just one. No more variables, no nothing left over, it's just one. In number three, I have six times y times x to the third times y to the fourth times x all raised to the second. 
um, there's a couple things that I'm going to do in here. One, I notice inside the parentheses that I have y terms that can be put together. I also notice that I have x terms that can be put together. So I'm going to do that first. I'm going to make that 6 times x to the 4th times y to the 5th. And that's just simplifying the inside. I haven't raised to the power of 2 yet, so I need to do that next. Then, when I raise to the power of 2 on the outside, every part gets raised to the power of 2. So I have 6 squared, x to the 4th to the 2nd, that's 6 squared, x to the 4th to the 2nd, y to the 5th to the 2nd, multiply those powers together, that's 36 x to the 8th, y to the 10th. You can also treat this as just having um, 6 x to the 4th, y to the 5th times itself two times. And the reason that comes into play is because you have this whole, you have two of this whole set of parentheses. If I look at it that way, it's 6 times 6, which is 36. x to the 4th, x to the 4th, that's x to the 8th, because I add those powers together. y to the 5th, y to the 5th, add those powers together, and I get y to the 10th. Same result. Either way you think of it is going to work for you. In number four, I just have some things to multiply together and then combine. So if I put together my coefficients on the outside, four times negative seven is negative 28. So those are my coefficients put together. Keep in mind, I didn't address this, but we can say it out loud here. There's an invisible little multiplication that's between these. This is not addition, this is not subtraction, this is not division. These are two parentheses being multiplied. So then if I look at the a terms, I have a to the first times a squared, that's a to the third. And I have b to the sixth times b to the third, that's b to the ninth. That is my expression there. I want to end up at a point where I have one coefficient that's reduced as much as it can be. So if there's a a set of parent or a, if there's a fraction or something I need to reduce that I also want each variable only one time so like up here we had two y's showing we don't want two y's we need to combine those two together okay same thing here I have an a times an a I want to combine those together let's look at the last two in this section I have four times a times b on the top of a fraction and I have an a on the bottom of a fraction now there's nothing I can do to simplify on the numerator and there's nothing I can do to simplify on the denominator separate from each other but so then I once I figure out that there's nothing to simplify separate from each other then I can go across the fraction bar I notice that an a divided by a is going to be 1 and that's going to cancel out so this whole thing is just going to be 4 times b over 1 which is just 4 times b. Okay, if I take a look at number six, um, I have lots of things that can combine across the fraction bar. Nothing to simplify on the top, nothing to simplify on the bottom, so that's where I'm going to go now. Um, if I look at this, a lot of people think that this 16 has to be married to the x, it has to stay with the x. That's not true. 16 is just a coefficient out front. So I can treat 16 over 4 like I would a normal fraction. I can take out the common factor of 4. 16 divided by 4 would be 4, and 4 divided by 4 would be 1. Then when I look at the x terms, I have 5 on top and 6 on the bottom. 5 of them are going to cancel. So the smaller number of them cancels. Then whatever's left over stays wherever there were extras. So all five on the top are going to go away. On the bottom, I'm going to be just left with x to the first. The y's, I have seven on top and four on the bottom. So the smaller number of them goes away. Four are going to cancel. And wherever the extras are, they stay up there. So y to the seventh over y to the fourth, I can get rid of all of these, and 7 minus 4 is 3, so I'm going to have y to the third on top. You can also see that if you expand these out. If I expanded out my y's, I'd have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 on top. I'd have 1, 2, 3, 4 on the bottom. I would cancel 1 over 1, 1 over 1, 1 over 1, 1 over 1, and I'm left with 3 left over. That's where I get that power of 3. So now let's put this whole shebang back together. I've got 4 times y to the third left on top. On the bottom, I have just x to the first. That is my simplified expression. So some stuff did actually stay on the bottom. That x term stayed on the bottom. Okay. 
let's flip over to the back. Now we're going to talk about how we would factor expressions. So um, the first thing we always want to do when we factor expressions is check for a GCF. So that is always step number one. Check for a GCF. Then once we check for GCF, we have kind of two paths that are going on here. If we have a monomial that's left, then we're done. There's no more factoring you can do, okay? If you have a binomial that's left, meaning two terms, ask yourself if it's a difference of two squares. If it is, you can factor that. That should, there should be any in there. You can factor that. If it's not, then you're done. Okay, if it's not a difference of two squares, then there's nothing else that you can do, and then you're done from there. Now, so that's binomials and monomials. If we end up with a trinomial, we have a couple of options. We can either use the X and group, or we're also going to talk about how we can guess and check our way into our factors today. So that'll be a little bit different for us. So we're going to guess and check our way into some of these factors. So um, so let's take a look at some examples. Um, oh, before we do that, if you don't remember these steps for factoring using the X, um, you can go, go ahead and write them down. I didn't leave you a table for them. We did these back in Unit 4. Um, but if you need to write them down, you can find some blank space somewhere in case you have forgotten them. So go ahead and pause your video if you'd like to write those down. So let's take a look at number one. In number one, I have x squared plus 6x plus 5. So the first thing I always want to check for is a GCF. There's nothing in 1, 6, and 5 that I can take out, and not all three terms have an x, so there's no GCF here. Then the next thing I ask myself is what kind of expression is it? Well, this is a trinomial. Okay, This has three terms, so no GCF and then it's a trinomial. So I have a couple of choices. I can factor using the x, or I can guess and check. And I'm going to show you both in this number one so you kind of see the difference here. Um, if I factor using the x, let's just review our memories on that. We would take 1 times 5, which is 5, and we would throw the b term on the bottom, which is 6. I want two things that multiply to 5 and add to 6. Well, that's going to give me 5 and 1. 5 times 1 is 5. 5 plus 1 is 6. So from there, I would split my middle term, x squared plus 5x plus 1x plus 5, and then I would group. I'd group the first two, I'd group the last two. From the first two, I can take out an x, that's x out front, x plus 5 behind. From the second group, all I can take out is a 1, that's 1 out front, x plus 5 behind. Outsides become 1 insides become the other. There's my factored form. Okay, mindless. Now, it's a little bit tedious. This is quite a lengthy process, and it takes us a little while to get through it, but it's mindless. It works every time. But there is a simpler way sometimes. There is a way that we can do this a little bit quicker um, just using a guess and check model. So that's what we're going to look at next. So I'm going to do this problem again. And I'm going to show you what it looks like if I just kind of back myself into what these factors look for. So let's think about our ultimate goal. Our ultimate goal is to get down to two factors that are multiplied together. And we know that these factors were multiplied first, outside, inside, last, or using the box, either way you think of it, um, to give us that product. So I know I need um, some variable times some variable that gives me x squared. Well, there's only one way that I can get x squared, and that's if I take an x times an x. So if I put my x terms in there, I know I'm going to have x times x, which is x squared. That gives me the one out front. That's what I know I'm going to end up with. Then if I think about the 5, that's that comes from the last two terms being multiplied together. So I know I need so two numbers that multiply together to give me 5. I want to make x squared and 5, and I want to see if it's going to give me the 6 in the middle. So if I do x plus 1 and x plus 5, did it work? Well, try putting it back together. That's x squared. That's plus x. That's plus 5x. And that's plus 5. And these two terms 
x squared plus 6x plus 5, I get back to my original result. So I know that this is my factored form, x plus 1, x plus 5. So you can kind of back your way into these factors, think about what you want that end result to look like, and fill in the holes from there. Okay, we'll do some more practice with that, so don't worry. Let's take a look at number two. And number two, remember the first thing you want to look for is a GCF. I recognize right away that I can take out a three and I can take out an X. Okay, that's my GCF there. So when I pull my GCF out front, I have three X. Take a look at what's left over. I'm left over with um, X and five. So X minus five are my extras. Then you have to ask yourself, is there anything you can do with X minus five? No, you can't. It's, it's a binomial, it's not a trinomial, and it's a binomial that doesn't have a squared term. So it's not a difference of two squares because that is just not possible. That's your final factored expression for that one. All we did there was take out a GCF and then we were done. Let's talk about number three. So in number three, if I try to use the guess and check model, let's just see what would happen here. I know that I want um, my first two terms to give me this 3x squared. So I know I'm going to have a 3x and an x. Okay, That's the only way that I can get to 3x squared. Okay, I can't multiply any other two whole numbers to give me 3. Now, I want an addition, I want a sum of 7x's, but I want a product of 2 at the end. So I know that I need to, the only way that I can get to 2 is 1 times 2. It's just a matter of, do I put my 1 here, or do I put my 1 there? Do I want 1 and 2, or do I want 2 and 1? Well, if I want a product of 7, that means I'm going to need some 3, I'm going to need 3 times the 2, to give me 6x, and I'm going to need a 1 to give me the seventh one. So I know I want this 3 multiplied by this 2 out here. That means I'm going to have my 1 there, and let's just check and see if it works. So first terms would give me the 3x squared that I knew I would get. Outside terms would give me the 6x that I was going for. Inside would give me the 1x that I'm going for, and the last two terms would give me the 2. So I end up with... 3x squared plus 7x plus 2, and that was the original expression. So that is my factored form, 3x plus 1, x plus 2. Let's take a look at number 4. In number 4, I have x squared minus 49. Um, so I first check for a GCF. There is no GCF between these two terms. Then I take a look at what kind of expression it is. This is a binomial. Okay, this is a binomial like number two was, meaning there's only two terms. And I also notice that this is a perfect square, that's a perfect square, and that is subtraction. So this is also a difference of two squares. So when I find the difference of two squares, again, I know I'm going to end up with something like this because that's what a difference of two squares looks like, and especially since I have an x raised to the second power, I know I needed some sort of x times x, then the way I get the second numbers is the fact that the square root of 49 is 7. Because if I add 7x and subtract 7x, that middle term goes away. I have 0x in the middle. So when I do the multiplication when I FOIL this back out, x times x is x squared, I have a positive 7x, I have a negative 7x, and those two things go away. The negative 7 times 7 is 49, negative 49, which is what I want. Okay, two more that we're going to kind of practice here. Um, x squared plus 2x minus 35. So in this one, if I use my guess and check method that I've been looking at today, I know that I want to get an x times an x. I can right away fill that in. Then at the end, I know that I want to get a 35. So let's think of the ways that multiply to 35. Well, I have 1 and 35, and I have 5 and 7, and that's it. There's no other ways that I can multiply and get a whole, multiply two whole numbers and get 35 as a result. So now I need to think about how do I get a positive 2? 
how do I make a sum of positive 2 in the middle? So if I make a sum of positive 2, that means I needed to have a positive 7 and a negative 5. So let's see if that works. If I do x minus 5 and x plus 7, what would I get if I foiled those back out? So my first two terms would be x squared. My outside terms would be 7x, positive 7x. My inside terms would be negative 5x. And my last two terms would be negative 35. I put those together and get my original thing. Okay, so this is my factored form of that expression. And then the last one that we're going to practice today, 2x squared minus 5x minus 3. Um, it always gets a little bit trickier when you've got the 2 in front, but there's still only one way that you can get to 2x squared, and that's by having a 2x here and an x there. Okay, I have to have 2x times x to give me 2x squared. So then the next thing that I want to consider is how do I get to negative 3? Well, it's got to be a 1 and a 3, and one of them has to be negative. That's the only way I can get to 3. So now let's see if we can make all of these things match together. If I want a sum of negative 5, that must have meant that I started with a 2 times 3, which gave me negative 6, and then added a positive 1, which gave me the negative 5. So that means I need my negative 3 to be out here because I want 2x times negative 3x, or I'm sorry, times negative 3. And that also means that this must have been a positive 1 so that I can get that positive 1x and give me the sum of negative 5 that I want. Let's see if it works. If I put all this back together, 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times the outside is negative 6x. 1 times x is positive 1x, and 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. Put those together, 2x squared minus 5x minus 3. So it got me back to my original, which is my goal. That's my factored expression. It's my factored form of that expression. Okay, so now this guess and check model is really nice. It's really slick when you can kind of back your way into some pretty easy basic trinomials. You want to be careful though when you are looking at trinomials that have something, I'm just making these up as I go, but if I'm looking at something like 6x squared, you know, minus something plus something, whatever, this 6 has a lot, there's a lot of ways you can get there. You can do 1 and 6, you can do a 2 and 3, you're going to have lots of options to get to that middle term. Same thing if you have like, I don't know, a uh, 16. You know, if you have a 16x squared in front, you've got a 1 and a 16, you've got a 2 and an 8, and you've got a 4 and a 4, and you could have a positive and negative version of all of those. Okay, so it gets kind of tricky. So there are some times when you're just going to want to set up the x and group because it's going to be mindless, it's going to be easy. It's kind of like using quadratic formula versus factoring when we're solving quadratics. Sure, quadratic formula is a little bit tedious and it takes us a little bit longer, but it's mindless and it always works. We don't have to ask ourselves if it's going to work. That's the nice thing about this method, this grouping and x method. But if you get some pretty basic trinomials that look like this, you know you can back yourself into what that product is and what that sum is because that's ultimately my goal. I still want a product here and I still want a sum there. Um, then you can go ahead and use the guess and check method and it might save you a little bit of time. That'll be especially important when we're in this unit nine um, where we're simplifying a lot of these expressions. So um, that's going to take us to the end of our review notes for um, unit nine notes two. Thanks for listening and I will see you all another time.